Hello and welcome back everyone, we weave online and today I'm gonna start a new series What if Kid Naruto was trained by FM Kurama Part 1 If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and to watch more videos like this, subscribe to my channel and turn that bell notification on so you never miss an upload. No wasting no more time, let's begin. Kanoha Forest The vista of the night forest is really lovely. The sound of crickets chirping and moonlight peeking through tree leaves combined to create a peaceful and serene atmosphere. A booming laugh broke the stillness of this moment. A man in an orange jumpsuit sits beneath a huge tree, holding a long scroll in his hands. He laughed once more as he unfolded the scroll. Ha, getting hold of this scroll was so easy. Sexy jutsu cage level. Let's see. The first technique is the cage bunshin no jutsu. Man, my least favorite technique, after 5 minutes. Important, all knowledge gained by clones is transferred to the user. This knowledge includes muscle memory, but not the muscles themselves. In theory, if you have enough chakra, you can use this technique for training. Such training will significantly accelerate the learning of techniques, but the amount of chakra needed for this is incredible. Author Tabarama Senju. Wow. Now I definitely want to learn this technique. A thousand Naruto, one shredded jacket of Aruka, and an immensely emotional speech later. Well, it seems like I went a little too far, uncomfortably scratched his head. A battered and unconscious Mizuki lies in front of him. Hmm, I remember how I attacked Mizuki from different sides. It's true. The technique transfers the memory of clones. So many possibilities. A smile appeared on Naruto's face, and Uruka felt a chill run down his spine. He sighed wearily and grinned after a while. For some reason, I feel that this is not just a happy smile because of his first victory. This smile promises trouble, he said. Naruto, come here. I have a gift for you. On the identical day, the apartment of Naruto. Yawn, what a day today. A pensive Naruto started his morning routine. After hastily preparing and closing the door, Naruto said, Ninja registration day tomorrow, graduation ceremony the day after tomorrow. Today, I can train. He stopped at Ikaraku for a bite before making his way to the forest. Naruto wasted little time in searching for a clearing to train in after arriving at the forest. Teju Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. Almost a thousand clones materialized all around him in a swirl of smoke. Since clones can't train muscles, you'll be practicing techniques we were taught in the academy. Choose the technique you want to try training and try to perfect it, as Uruka showed. Special attention to Bunshin no Jutsu. I don't understand why I can't perform it, but Uruka said it's important to know all three basic techniques, so we keep trying until it works. A unified high was heard all over the forest. I, in the meantime, will be training my muscles. Now that I'm a ninja, I have to train even harder than before. That was the start of Naruto's day. After six hours, sweat and dirt coated, Naruto said enough. This is really boring, and I'm tired. That's it for today, we'll continue tomorrow. The clones surrounding him grinned smugly as he said, let's finish it with a battle royale. We fight with everything we've got. For ninjas, there's no such thing as a dirty game. One of the clones suddenly popped the other by smashing his face into the ground. Following that, all of the clones started battling it out, even resorting to the use of shuriken and kunai. A clone of Naruto stole kunai that was intended for him, while another nearly got a kunai in his side but was able to utilize Kawarami in time. A different Naruto tried using sexy jutsu when his chakra was almost completely gone. Naruto appears to be the only person immune to this fabled technique as they swiftly vanquished the clone with a punch to the face. Before long, there were just the two Naruto remaining in the clearing, their deadly looking gazes locked. The momentary silence that descended was broken by one of them. So, you're the last surviving clone? The Naruto asked, his clothes severely torn, his face slashed twice, and there were evident bloodstains in several areas. It seemed unusual that this Naruto was likewise coated in blood and mud, said the clone. What makes you think you're the original? His face remained unmarked, but the right sleeve of his jumpsuit was missing, and there was a new cut on his bare arm where blood was slowly seeping out. 
After exchanging quick glances for a few more seconds, the two Naruto charged into combat. After his own kunai ran out, the Naruto with the facial scratches picked up one off the ground and attempted to strike the other Naruto in the side, but he was able to block it with his own. Following a few punches, the sleeveless Naruto abruptly stooped down to avoid taking another hit from the kunai. He then took a tiny handful of dirt and flung it right into the other Naruto's eyes. Argi, seizing the opportunity, he struck the leg with a quick kunai. But just then, the red-faced Naruto vanished in a cloud of smoke, leaving a log in its place. His world darkened as a voice cried out, Hail to the log, from behind him. With a swirl of smoke, the sleeveless Naruto disappeared, and the original sighed with relief. He let out another breath and started gathering the dispersed kunai and shuriken on the field. Phew, I wasn't sure if I was the original. I'll have to set some restrictions for these battles in the future. I could have lost an eye and fingers a few times. Eh, I'll figure it out later. After gathering nearly everything he owned, he stated, I think I'll visit Hakage Jiji. He said he has an ointment that helps heal scratches. He then proceeded to the Hakage residence. The Hakage ought to have completed his duties by now as the sun had already set. I'll look for the shuriken I lost tomorrow. In this darkness, almost nothing is visible. I'm so hungry. After 10 minutes, the god of Shinobi, Sir Tobai Horizon, the third Hakage, exclaimed, Hey Yajiji, when he saw his surrogate grandchild waiting at his door. However, his smile vanished as soon as he saw what was wrong with him. What happened, Naruto? Training got a little out of control, nervously wiped his head and grinned shyly. Jiji, you said you have an ointment that helps heal scratches? Yes, of course, come in. But next time something like this happens, go straight to the hospital. Naruto was pouting now, saying, You know I don't like hospitals. I don't like their smell. Observing Naruto's pout, Hurizen gave a kind smile. Wait a second, I'll bring the ointment. Hurizen covered Naruto's face with the healing ointment a minute later. Well, Naruto, spill the beans. How did you get these injuries? These are just scratches. I told you it's from training. I found a cool new training method. And do these scratches involve this new method? No, my clones got a little too excited, Naruto replied with a shy smile. Clones? Harrison said as she bandaged her scrapes, set the medicine down, and paid close attention to Naruto's tail. Erg Naruto's stomach gave a grumble. Hee hee, maybe we should go to Ikaraku. I was so busy in training that I missed lunch. Well, I haven't had dinner yet. Ramen sounds like a good idea. Naruto said, of course. It's the food of the gods. Hurizen giggled a little. Ramen Ikaraku. After 10 minutes, Cage Bunshin, no jutsu, the elderly Hakage said, pausing to think. At this, Hurizen halted his thoughts and stroked his beard. This is a dangerous training method. But with his enormous reserves and reserves of... In the meantime, Naruto had finished half of his ramen. Naruto took slurps and exclaimed, Tuchai Ajisen, your ramen is amazing as always. Ho ho, of course, we must maintain our reputation, Tuchai said, grinning smugly and speaking with pride. There was silence for a minute until Hurizen spoke once more. Naruto, I have a few questions for you. Please give me an honest answer. Sure. How many clones did you create for training? A thousand. Hurizen pondered for a little moment but probably more, as the clones also created clones. When all the clones dispersed, did you feel discomfort, headache, or disorientation? Hmm, no. All right, now tell me how you got these injuries. I am walked up to them at this point and fixed a hard, unblinking gaze on Naruto. Naruto was perspiring heavily beneath Iam's intense gaze. Um, well, after my clones finished training with techniques and I finished physical training, we decided to have a battle. With a hint of humor and concern, Haruzin questioned, like a tournament, more like a war, last standing is the winner. We didn't set any restrictions, and within moments Shuriken and Kunai were flying all over the clearing. Ayam and Haruzin scowled. Ayam opened her mouth to speak first, offering some wise remarks. Baka. Naruto's perspiration fell. 
The Hakage spoke in a grave and commanding voice, Naruto, your training method is extremely dangerous. For your own safety, I will set some restrictions to prevent you from crippling yourself. Naruto gave a nod. Firstly, no full-scale wars with clones. Although you can make them fight each other, under no circumstances should you intervene in the battle. Naruto responded with a eureka face and struck his palm with his fist. Secondly, don't create more than a thousand clones. While unused chakra from clone dispersing returns to you, you can still die from chakra exhaustion if you create more clones than you have chakra for. A further nod from Naruto, that's all for now. Try not to exhaust yourself to death, Naruto. With a serious tone, Naruto said, Hi, Hakage Jiji, Tuchai, Haruzen, and Ayan giggled at Naruto's attempt at seriousness. The Hakage finished his ramen and persisted in eating despite the numerous empty bowls stacked up in front of him. Naruto, what techniques did your clones practice? With his hand on his chin, Naruto thought for a moment before feeling a chill go down his spine and noticing Ayam's icy gaze. Slue pa e henge, kawerami and standard bunshin. Those are all the techniques I know, except for sexy jutsu and cage bunshin, though I have an idea to improve sexy jutsu, she said. What did you just say? Ayam's presence alone was enough to cause water to freeze. And nothing. Cough I recommend you improve your chakra control. Leaf concentration, tree walking and water walking. Your Jonin sensei will teach you the last two, and you learned the first one in the academy. Mao. It's so boring. Naruto pouted, causing Aim to smile once again. Naruto, while you were in the academy, you were a child and could do everything ordinary children do. After the graduation ceremony, you will officially become an adult shinobi, obtaining the rights and responsibilities of an adult. I expect professionalism and respect from my shinobi. As a shinobi of Kanohagakure no Sato, you will represent Kanoha to the world. What will the world think of our village when one of our shinobi is lazy, ignores the rules, or shows no respect to their leadership? Naruto looked down at his bowl of ramen. The image caused Harrison's eyes to soften, and he forced Naruto to elevate his gaze by placing a hand on his shoulder. Despite everything, I believe in you, Naruto. You can achieve your dreams. A fire flared in Naruto's eyes that he was unable to contain. Of course, I, Yuzumaki Naruto, will become the greatest Hakage, better than all the past and future ones, believe me. Day of Ninja Registration. Kanoha Forest. In the middle of a clearing, a perfectly healthy Naruto stood and gazed upon a thousand of his clones. His typical orange slacks and jacket were immaculate, like they had just been purchased. He turned around and put his hands behind his back, saying, Jiji is right, as he paced in front of the clones. Now that we are Leaf Genin, we are one step closer to the title of Hakage. We can't waste time daydreaming. A chorus of high boss resounded, startling any animal that dared venture into the clearing. Today, we need to elevate our chakra control to a new level. All of you will try to keep a leaf on your forehead for as long as possible. Anyone who thinks this is a boring and useless exercise doubts the decision of the Hakage and must perform seppuku. Naruto stopped and gave his clones an intent gaze. You can start the exercise. This time, the cry, Hi, boss, appeared much louder. Gathering leaves from the trees and the ground, all of the Naruto dispersed throughout the clearing. Sergeant Naruto went to snap a picture for his file in the meantime. He practiced facial expressions and even made an extremely interesting war paint for it, but in the end, he just took an ordinary picture of his most attractive face. After about an hour, Kanoha streets, Walking peacefully through the streets of Kanoha towards the forest, Naruto thought to himself, Haha, Jiji seemed more surprised that I didn't pull any pranks than when I actually did. However, he soon realized that someone was following him. HM? He turned to see a boy who was attempting, but failing badly, to hide behind a pole while wearing a helmet on his head and a long scarf around his neck. With a cry of stop following me, what the hell is that? The boy attempted to use the cloak of invisibility jutsu right in front of Naruto's eyes, but was unsuccessful. 
Naruto turned around and headed down another street. Sadly, you aren't fooling anyone, idiot, the boy remarked, sounding a little arrogant. He he. Impressive, seeing through my technique and removed the cloak of invisibility. Naruto waved his hand in denial while sporting a large drop of sweat on his face. No no, it was quite obvious. The boy exclaimed hey, I'll let you be my boss, huh? In exchange, teach me that sexy no jutsu you defeated grandpa with, please. I think the clones will manage the training without my supervision. After an hour, Bon Kayu Bon, Kanoha Forest, three stood in a little clearing. Naruto, a naked woman, and a man dressed in dark attire. The exhibitionist beauty's seductive pose with her hands in her hair and her voice resonating for the man in the dark was, take this, sexy no jutsu. With a dropped jaw, the man Abisu observed the woman till she vanished in a cloud of smoke. Konohamaru materialized in her place. Huh? It didn't work? The boy in the helmet tried to run away, but Abisu caught him by the scarf and pulled him back. Wh wa, what kind of vulgar technique is this? It's not fit for gentlemen's eyes, and I won't fall for it, honorable grandson. If you lower yourself to consort with creatures of this sort, you will descend to his level, Ibisu exclaimed, blushing and embarrassed. Only by following my teaching will you ever merit the name of Hakage. Their disagreement was cut off by a loud yell, Teju Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. They could see at least a hundred of Naruto's clones as they looked in the direction he had been standing. Wow, that's incredible. As soon as he said, heh, how foolish, I am an elite tutor. I am not Mizuki, all of the clones cried out. Transform. In front of Ibisu materialized hundreds of nude blondes with two high ponytails and facial whisker markings. Some just posed from a distance, while others hung on his arms, legs, back and neck. A minute later, Ibisu was five meters away, a blood fountain shooting out of his nose. I call that one harem no jutsu. Naruto grinned smugly before it transformed into a contemplative look. Maybe I can improve this technique? I'll have to make clones start the research. Following yet another impassioned speech and the rivalry declaration. Pondering, Naruto strolled over to the clearing where he had left his clones. Thousands of sleeping Naruto were found heaped on top of one another, on the ground, and on trees when Naruto arrived at the location where he had left his clones. Maybe I could improve the cloak of invisibility. But where can I get so many cloaks? He thought to himself. What the hell? Naruto said as he swiftly destroyed the clones that were sleeping and took their memories. The clones' maximum holding time for the leaf on their forehead was five minutes before they were distracted. One by one, the clones began to nod off after an hour of repetitions. With a deep sigh, Naruto shook his head in refusal. With his hands folded into a clone seal, Naruto produced three clones, saying, What did I expect? Anyways, the clones gave Naruto a shy back rub as they said, Let's practice in a two-on-two -two battle. You can create an additional clone. If it gets dispelled, you can make another one. I don't think this counts as a full-scale war that Hakage Jiji forbade. Try not to kill me. With those remarks, two clones to Naruto's left jumped away from the original and another clone, hurling shurikens in their direction. Well, let's begin. Taking their own shurikens, the original crew dispersed and threw them at the clone team. The clones effortlessly avoided the shurikens and charged Naruto from the right, diving farther away from his comrade as they threw three shurikens apiece at him. With a kunai drawn, Naruto, who was on the left side of the clone squad, began to sprint toward the direction of the clones. The clone team started taijutsu right away, and it was clear that they were winning only by sheer force of numbers. One of the clones kicked Naruto in the ribs after he deflected a few of their blows, which let another clone attack his jaw. This Naruto vanished in a cloud of smoke after the second blow, and a log took his place. Immediately behind them came the sound of two pairs of quick footsteps. The original team attempted to use rear-facing kunai strikes on the clones. The kunai revealed another pair of logs as it moved through the smoke left behind by the hits. After pulling kunais from the logs, the two Naruto heard someone say, it seems we can perform kawarami faster now. 
As they turned to face the clone, they realized that there was just one. They decided to immediately dispel the clone in front of them, instead of looking for another one, and they launched an attack. Without wasting any time, the clone attacked the closer Naruto after forming a clone seal. The freshly made clone battled with the second attacking Naruto after grabbing a kunai. They traded kunai strikes for a minute, but none of them connected. Then, from behind the attacking team, a loud battle cry was heard, giving the original team the opportunity to quickly dodge the sneak attack. Why did you yell before the attack? The clone in defense said, regrouping and leaping to another. You almost had both of them. In response, the other Naruto looked embarrassed and blushed a little, but he said, I, I don't know. A moment later, he scowled and gestured to his actual duplicate. Wait, why are you yelling at me? You're me, so if I did it, you would have done the same. The original Naruto pointed at his nearly identical duplicate and exclaimed, I'm not dumb enough to do something so idiotic. You're me, idiot. If I'm an idiot, then you're an idiot too. Following this declaration, the original Naruto destroyed the cage bunshin, no jutsu and murmured, stupid cage bunshins, his cheeks flushed with shame. Naruto sighed and looked to where the sun was. I still have about an hour before lunch, he said, inhaling deeply, creating a seal of a clone and exclaiming Teiju Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. Once the technique's smoke cleared, he started giving his clones assignments. The original Naruto exclaimed, no, scratch that. 398 clones will perform the Bunshin. Two will assist me in training, and the last hundred clones will be responsible for our most powerful weapon, Sexy Jutsu. Then the clones began to go about their assigned tasks. Alright? Half of you practice the leaf concentration exercise. If you start to doze off, create another clone and disperse yourselves. The other half will attempt the regular bunshin. After putting an end to the argument, Naruto split the clones into five groups. When he chose 100, their faces brightened and smiled. Harim no Jutsu is an incredible technique, but it doesn't limit our abilities. He looked around at all his clones and exclaimed, Good luck, everyone. The clones all shouted back, Thanks, boss, and were much louder than the other 900 clones, despite the lucky 100 being smaller. Naruto approached the clones that were practicing and, with two of them at his side, walked away to explain the training plan. A clone raised an eyebrow to cut him off. The two of you will fight against me. Kunai and Shuriken are prohibited. Clones too. One clone is not enough to truly make me go all out, so. You do realize that we're you. You don't need to explain everything in such detail. His voice boomed as he charged the clone. Oh right, my bad. Let's get started. And the training began. Fifteen minutes later. Ramen Ikaraku. Naruto walked into the restaurant beaming, saying, Hey, Tuchai Ajisen, I really need a large serving of miso ramen with roasted pork filet. You've been coming here a lot lately, Naruto, I am observed, her grin quickly turning to a frown when she noticed a lump beneath Naruto's right eye. I am frowned, and Naruto quickly calmed her, saying, So many good things have been happening lately, I constantly feel like celebrating something. Naruto started to perspire, but Ayam's squinted eyes told him, hey, it's just a bump. The clones went a bit overboard again. It'll heal by tomorrow anyway. Baka. Tuchai appeared at the counter abruptly, carrying a bowl of ready-to-eat ramen. Tuchai put the bowl of ramen in front of Naruto and added, don't worry Ayam. How can he dream of becoming Hakage if he's afraid of a scratch? The shinobi craft is dangerous. You can't avoid a scratch. But still, be careful, Naruto. Hi, Tuchai Ajisen, Naruto said as he started quickly gobbling up the ramen. Uruka arrived to the restaurant a moment later and grinned when she saw Naruto working the counter. Hi, Naruto. After rapidly swallowing the ramen, Naruto turned to face the recognizable voice. Uruka-sensei, how's your back? Not bad. Uryo Ninjutsu is doing its job. What about your eye? Oh, just training. Naruto's eyes widened at Aruka as memories of the dispelled clone suddenly filled his head. Woohoo, W what? Aruka-sensei, you were right, I did it. 
Naruto exclaimed, leaping off his stool and bouncing all over Uruka. Uruka calmed Naruto down by giving him a small tap on the head as she became agitated. Now explain what happened. Uruka's eyes widened a little at these words, well. Naruto pouted, I had memories from a clone that managed to perform Bunshin no Jutsu, and in joy, it hit its head on a branch, dispersing. Making the appropriate hand seals, Naruto said, oh right, let me try now. Bunshin no Jutsu. Instantly, a happy replica of Naruto materialized next to him. The clone showed that the wall was still intact by reaching its hand through and back through it. The clone vanished after that, and Uruka gave Naruto a wide-eyed stare. Just yesterday, he couldn't create a clone that could even stand. He said he received memories from a clone. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu? Well done, Naruto. I'll pay for the ramen today, exclaimed Tuchai, who was present for the entire show. Yada. Naruto threw his fist up in the air once more. Thank you, Tuchai Ajisen. So, you're practicing with Cage Bunshin no Jutsu? Uruka inquired, gathering his thoughts. Naruto grinned even more. He had already gone back to sitting on his stool and eating ramen. In return, he gave a nod. Yeah. Uruka sat next to Naruto and asked Tuchai for his ramen, saying, You're making great progress. So, what else are you training with the clones? Silently and shivering, Naruto finished yesterday, I mainly trained Kawarami and Bunshin. Today, it's Bunshin and the leaf concentration that Hakage Jiji recommended. And of course, sexy jutsu. Don't tell I am. Just as I am was slicing ingredients, a loud sound reverberated throughout the restaurant. Uruka grinned while he heard Naruto. You have a lot of reliance on our Hakage, that's good. Although it wouldn't hurt to have a bit more respect. Of course, Jiji is Hakage. How can I not trust the Hakage? Naruto answered, utterly disregarding Uruka's second sentence. After Tuchai informed them that the complimentary ramen had run out, and that only the non-expiring one was left, they spent the remainder of the lunch chatting about various topics and parted ways. Naruto made the decision to meander around Kanoha before carrying out his training. Meanwhile, in the hot springs of Kanoha, one Naruto Yuzumaki stood serious not far from the women's side of the hot springs. Without changing clothes, Naruto changed into his feminine form by forming the required hand seals for Henge, referring to it as the next stage of research for sexy jutsu. Naruto inhaled deeply before going inside the hot springs women's side dressing room. His gaze instantly landed on an amazing sight, a woman taking off a dark orange miniskirt. Her hair was black with a blue tinge. All that was visible beneath was a thin metal mesh that matched her body's contours and covered her from neck to thigh. And not a single thing more. Naruto paused at the dressing room entrance, grabbing the woman's attention. She positioned the dark orange miniskirt next to her tan overcoat and gave Naruto a cold, hard stare that morphed into the biggest, scariest smile Naruto had ever seen on a human. She walked slowly toward him, swinging her hips even more, and rested her hands on his shoulders. Hey there, I'm Anko. What's your name? H. Hi, I'm Naruko, Naruto replied, kicking himself for making the mistake. Anko started lowering her hands down Naruto's torso, saying, Nice to meet you. I couldn't help but notice how you were looking me over. Are you a lesbian? More blushing came over Naruto from her words and deeds. Or just henge no jutsu? She asked, smiling as she swiftly withdrew a kunai from its holster on Naruto's leg and pressed it to his neck. Now drop henge or die. Naruto's face turned pale as soon as it lost all the blood it had up until that point. Damn, a shinobi! Naruto expelled the henge, possibly out of shock or terror. I, I apologize. Naruto blushed even more when Anko got closer to him and touched him on the body. Anko massaged Naruto's chest with her breasts and moved her hand down his back, saying, HM, what to do? Anko trailed the kunai from his neck to his cheek, saying, I could forgive you. She slashed his face quickly and sucked the blood that began to pour from it in an enticing way, saying, but perverts like you simply call punishment upon themselves. 
In an instant, the clone vanished in a cloud of smoke, leaving an astonished Anko alone himself in the chamber. A clone? Anko asked, taking a surprised look at the hand where the kunai had been lying only a moment before. For a minute or so, she wondered, how did he not disappear immediately after being cut? But as soon as she submerged herself in the hot water, she quickly forgot about it. Naruto was in the center of the road at the same moment. Naruto grinned broadly as he strolled along the street. So far, his day was going well, and nothing could spoil it. All of a sudden, the clone began to send him memories. Naruto collapsed to his knees in the middle of the road and clutched his crotch. Gathering his thoughts, Naruto rose up and made his way towards the jungle, exclaiming, Metal Mesh, how sexy. But after a little moment, his face went white. Thinking, she saw my face, I'm dead, log, give me protection. He fled into the woods, Kanoha Forest. When he arrived at the well-known clearing, he saw that all of his clones were still in training despite having somewhat pallid features. They all stopped when they saw him coming, and he glanced around to see that a hundred clones were missing. With lightning speed, he banished every clone and gained their memories. After the first clone who was able to escape, the rest of the clones training Bunshin finished the assignment and took his memories. They nevertheless persisted in practicing Bunshin, growing in quantity, look, and other aspects. Surprisingly, the clones engaged in the leaf concentration exercise never dozed off and kept going until their control wavered and they retrieved memories from the perverted clone. At first, the hundred clones refining sexy jutsu attempted to improve the skill by remaining in the clearing and assessing one another's proficiency. After realizing after 30 minutes that they were lacking in originality, they set out to discover it elsewhere, primarily in the library with its assortment of publications. Before long, one clone desired more. That is the twisted clone's life narrative. Naruto chose to take a nap since he was exhausted from training and the clone's recollections. Naruto took a leaf from nearby and placed it on his forehead while he sat comfortably on the ground. Well, I'll try it myself. After a slumbering ten minutes, Naruto remarked, Ha ha, it's not as difficult as it seemed. The Hakage's workspace. After thirty minutes, with a puff of smoke, the Hakage set a stack of signed documents next to him. Haruzen activated Crystal Ball no Jutsu and started looking for Naruto's chakra, expecting to see Clone Wars. I need to see how Naruto is doing. I hope he won't start another war with clones. Kubai's chakra may increase his natural regeneration, but I doubt it will regrow lost limbs. He was taken aback to discover Naruto dozing off in the lotus position with a leaf resting on his forehead. Is he maintaining the chakra flow necessary to keep the leaf on his forehead while sleeping? The leaf dropped from Naruto's forehead at that very moment, and the old Hakage laughed quietly as loud snores resounded across the area. I'm glad he listened to me and at least tried to train his chakra control. Although the leaf concentration exercise helps improve chakra control, its true purpose is to hone the individual's concentration. That's what Naruto lacks at the moment. Haruzen took a deep breath and let out a big of incense. He looked back at the crystal ball and laughed a little more as he saw Naruto curled up on the ground with a runny nose. Maybe Naruto will become one of the genin who get promoted this year. Well, we'll see. The day of graduation. On a rooftop close to the Shinobi Academy. Five minutes after Aruka threw everyone out. Sitting on the roof, Naruto consumed a sandwich he had purchased and drank coke to wash it down. Man, Sasuke is such a jerk, and Sakura. This sucks, he exclaimed as he quickly finished his sandwich and coke, sprang off the rooftop and strolled slowly through the streets. What could I do? He noticed a female ahead who had dark blue hair and white eyes. She was speaking with a woman with dark hair who was wearing what looked like bandages with a rose thorn-like pattern on them. Naruto couldn't remember how many times he'd spoken to the girl with the white eyes in his entire time at the academy. Alternatively put, he was completely unable to recall, which surprised him as he had believed he had made an effort to get along with every student. He could not even recall her name. He decided to correct this error right now and went up to the two who were speaking. Ano, 
They turned to face him, breaking off their chat. The white-eyed female gave him a deep flush and let out an odd eep sound. He started to say something like, sorry to interrupt, but, but stopped as he noticed who was approaching him from down the street. Anko, his face abruptly lost all color and he turned to quickly get away. In an instant, he was gone from view. The woman with dark hair pivoted to face Naruto and noticed Anko. Oh, hello, Anko. Anko looked at Hinata and said, Hey, Kiranai-chan, are you here to pick up your adorable Jenins? Which made the girl flush. And this is Hinata, this is Anko Midarashi. Anko, this is Hinata Huga. It's nice to meet you, the bashful girl muttered. Nice to meet you too, girl. Anko responded, giving the girl a big smile. Kiranai nodded and cast a confused glance at Anko. Did you do something to Yuzumaki Naruto? Anko made a momentary thinking look in response to the inquiry, but then her smile came back. Ah, what's about Brat? He was just here. He saw you and fled at a speed that Chunin would envy, Kiranai said. Anko thought to himself, ah ha ha ha, how unfortunate. After our last meeting, I wanted to taste his blood. The clone's blood had a strange taste. Maybe the original's taste is different. Ignoring Anko's eccentricities, Kiranai inquired, Where did you last meet him? Anko smiled instead of scowling. Why, in the women's side of hot springs, of course. In the afternoon, a classroom within the academy. Seated next to Sakura, Naruto looked around the room uneasily. He looked over and saw that Hinata was staring at him. Her eyes, he could see that it wasn't hate, but he doesn't know what that meant. Nice, now she will hate me, and I just wanted to know her name. After five minutes, Jonin began entering the classroom to get their cell phones back. Kiranai Yuhai squinted her eyes and gave Naruto a special look as soon as she walked into the room. Great, Jonin on the enemy list on my first day as a ninja, after an hour. Calmly, Naruto said, why are we the only cell? Naruto sprung from his chair and exclaimed, Whose teacher hasn't shown up yet? Sakura cried out, Cut it out, Naruto. He got up on a chair next to the entrance and positioned an eraser he had taken from the board between the door and the wall. A traditional practical joke, doors open, eraser on the head. Hey, what are you up to? Sakura shouted at Naruto as he was going about his business. Naruto answered, ha ha ha, that's what he gets for making us wait. Once more, Sakura said, grow up. Sasuke chimed in, HMPH. There is no way a superior shinobi could be caught by such a simple booby trap. The classroom doors opened, and the man with the silver hair was hit in the head by an eraser. Ha 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 ha, gotcha, I'm sorry sensei. I tried to stop him, but Naruto. Putting his hand on his chin, the man made his way into the classroom and posed thoughtfully. Hmm, how should I put this? Based on my first impression, I'd have to say, I hate you. Naruto almost passed out. Two Jonins hating me, and all in one day? Good going, Naruto, on the academy's roof. Now, I want you all to tell me a bit about yourselves. Like what? You know, the usual. Your favorite things, what you hate most. Dreams, ambitions, hobbies things like that. Help us out here, sensei. You go first, show us how it's done, urged Naruto. That's right. After all, you are a complete stranger to us, Sakura said. Oh me? My name is Hade Kakashi. I'm the kind of person who doesn't feel like talking about his likes and dislikes. My dreams for the future are none of your business. But anyway, I have a lot of hobbies. Sakura said, hey, he said a lot, but all we really learned was his name. All right, it's your turn. Starting with you on the right. Me, right? My name is Yuzumaki Naruto. What I like is instant cup ramen. What I like even more is when Uruka sensei treats me to ramen at Ikaraku's. What I hate is a three minute wait after I pour in the boiling water in my ramen. Kakashi wondered, is there anything else on his mind besides ramen? My dream is to become a better shinobi than all the Hakage there ever was and will be. And then all the villagers will have to acknowledge my existence at least. Well, hasn't he turned out interesting? My hobbies are pranks and watering plants, I guess. 
Ah, uh, but training with Cage Bunchen is quite funny too. Cage Bunchen? Next. My name is Uchiha Sasuke. There are plenty of things I hate, but I don't see that it matters. There is almost nothing I do like. It seems pointless to talk about dreams, that's just a word. But what I have is determination. I plan to restore my clan. And there is someone I have sworn to kill. He is so cool. Hope it's not me. I had this much suspicion, Kakashi said after giving it some thought. And finally, the young lady. I am Haruno Sakura. My favorite thing is, well, it's not a thing, it's a person, a boy. And that boy is. Sakura glanced at Sasuke a couple of times in shyness. Sakura flushed, covering her face with her hands as she said, Ah, uh, let's move on to my dream. Sakura went on, I hate. The named boy gazed at the love of his life and exclaimed, Naruto, wa, she said, glancing once more at Sasuke. My hobbies are, did he just turn red? It sounds like young girls are more interested in boys than ninjutsu. Kakashi reflected. Enough. I believe we all understand one each other. Thirty minutes subsequently, the apartment of Naruto. Naruto has a cup of instant ramen while seated at the table. I can't go back to the academy. I've trained too hard to just go back. Another Naruto, perched on a chair in front of the original, exclaimed, You are right. But what can you do to pass this test? I can train even harder, but you can't overexert yourself before the test. The original saw his clone as a traitor rather than as his own replica. When did I ever train to the point of exhaustion and felt tired the next day? The clone broke out in sweat. Right. But you fell asleep yesterday after dispersing the clones. Isn't that fatigue? Hmm. Probably because of the boredom of leaf concentration exercise. Though you're right, it's better to reduce the number of clones for training. Let's leave it at 500 clones, Naruto replied with an expression of contemplation. All right, what are we going to train? Not sure. Kakashi Sensei is probably stronger than me. Hmm, how do you figure that out? He couldn't even notice and dodge an eraser. Yes, but he's still a Jonin. Jiji may be old, but he's still the Hakage. He appointed this guy as our sensei, so he must be strong. The original was regarded by the clone as a traitor in the room. And since when do you really make sense? Naruto, irritated, abandoned the technique and allowed the clone to scatter. He then started consuming his cup of instant ramen. If he's stronger than me, I need to improve my avoiding skills. The cloak of invisibility might come in handy. I need to practice using it. A regular bunchen can help distract him although Cage Bunshin would handle it just as well. Kawarami for escape. Sexy Jutsu might work on him, but Sakura will kill me right after the test, or during it. While eating his ramen, a scowl showed up on his face. What if he's way stronger than me? I heard that Jonin's are hundreds of times stronger than Jenin. I'm not very good at math, and I'm much stronger than a Jenin, but a hundred sounds like a lot. Maybe I'll have to work with Sasuke to pass this test, Naruto said, ugh, gross, as he turned to face the cup of instant ramen, which appeared to be staring at him with wide open eyes. He started to apologize as soon as he realized what he had said and to whom, kissing the hot cup without caring that his lips were burning. He finished the instant ramen quickly, cleaned the cup, and began packing his belongings to head to the forest. But we're a team now. We'll have to work together. I guess it's better to try to get used to it. I'll need to ask Jiji for advice. He corrected himself, thinking back to all the times Sakura had struck him on the head. Man, I still can't believe Sakura hates me. Well, maybe I can. But I thought our relationship was getting better. Maybe I can impress her during the test. The Office of the Hakage After knocking on the office door, Naruto waited for a booming come in, Naruto to come from inside. Hey, Jiji. Naruto called out to his substitute grandfather. The Hakage answered, Hello, Naruto. To what am I obliged by this visit? We were assigned a Janin sensei today, and he told us about the real Janin exam. Ah, of course. Kakashi-kun, right? Naruto responded in his typically animated manner, Yeah, that's right. Kakashi-sensei said it would be a survival exercise, and he'll be our enemy. 
He gets Hakage's nod of approval and says, but he's a Jonin, right? I heard Jonins are incredibly strong compared to Jenin. So I thought maybe we'd have to work together with Sasuke and Sakura to win. After saying these things, the Hakage's eyebrows shot up, but he soon regained control over his expressions, keeping simply a kind grin. Sounds good. Yeah, but Sasuke is a jackass, and Sakura straight up said today that she hates me. So how do I work with them? Hmm. The Hakage thought for a while while petting his facial hair. Do you remember our last conversation, Naruto? What does the Hakage expect from his shinobi? Um, Naruto narrowed his eyes, attempting to remember the exchange from a few days prior. Professionalism and respect. Remember, Naruto, professionalism doesn't mean being the strongest or having the most extensive ninjutsu arsenal. It means consistently achieving high standards in the work you do and the way you behave. So, even if you complete missions flawlessly, you still need to look for ways to improve. Not just in the art of shinobi, but also in your behavior. The Hakage examined Naruto to determine whether he was following his thought process. When he spotted Naruto's intent look, he grinned. Respect, in turn, means not only addressing me only as Hakage-sama or bowing to me at certain degrees, but also having respect for all your friends, colleagues, and in some cases enemies. Although many of them may seem unworthy of your respect, it often means you're not looking at the situation from all possible angles. In response to Naruto's confused expression, the Hakage lets take your teammate Sasuke, for example. In your words, he's a jackass. But why does he behave that way? Or your other teammate, Sakura? Why does she hate you? You can come up with answers to these questions in your head, but often they're just empty words. If you've been trying to change your friend's opinions about you for a long time, but nothing works, you need to try a new approach. A completely new approach. An approach that won't annoy Sasuke and won't push Sakura away. Naruto gave the elderly Hakage a nod after giving it some thought for a minute. Okay, Jiji, I'll try to do as you said. I'll try to respect them. After five minutes, Kanoha Forest. As he formed the clone seal, Naruto pondered one more time. A cloud of smoke materialized in front of him, revealing 100 clones. You will perform the leaf concentration exercise. Although the leaf has stopped falling from my forehead at all, I think this exercise can still be done. After all, Hakage Jiji and Aruka Sensei praised it so much. As he folded the clone seal once more, a hundred more clones materialized in front of him. Kawarami, bring it to an excellent level. Naruto faced 300 clones and one more clone seal. Teijutsu. Muscles don't transfer, but their memory does. Something like that was written in the scroll of seals. Try to fight each other. One-on-one, -on -one, two two-on-two, or a full-scale war, it doesn't matter. When your number drops, I'll restore you again to 300. Folding the clone seal once more, five clones materialized in front of him. Hmm. It will be a bit more than 500. Meh, what can you do? He said. Let's train with the Cloak of Invisibility. I don't have cloaks for a larger number of clones, so let's stick to five. Naruto laughed evilly, thinking Kakashi-sensei won't see what hits him, not realizing that Kakashi was watching him from a neighboring tree. With a final glance at Naruto's face, Kakashi vanished in the Kanoha Shunshin. So this is what he meant by funny training. Training with such a number of clones would instantly kill a normal person, and he's training like this when his genin exam starts in just 14 hours. Such recovery speed was possessed by only one person I knew, Kushina-san. The day of the last examination, ground of training three. There is a lovely area with three wooden posts encircled by a river and a forest. The charm of this location is enhanced by the distant mountains that can be seen from the riverbank. Sakura and Sasuke stand silently next to the wooden posts. Sakura is always flirting with Sasuke but the youngster is paying close attention to her. That went on until Naruto, who was exhausted, came into the clearing. Naruto murmured, rubbing his eyes, Hey guys. Fakura screamed as she got ready to strike Naruto in the skull. The hell. We're taking important for us exam today, and you didn't even get enough sleep. Sheesh, good morning to you too, Sakura-chan. 
was an inappropriate reply given Sakura's attempt to strike Naruto in the head. With a lazy gait, Naruto sidestepped her blow and continued toward the wooden post. He turned to face his companions after putting his supply backpack beneath the post. Yesterday, after Kakashi Sensei dismissed us, I spent a lot of time thinking about how we could pass this exam. Fakira cut her off, saying, I thought it wouldn't rain today. He said, I came up with an interesting idea. We need to work as a team. Sakura gave him a stupid looking expression. Naruto stroked his temple uncomfortably and said, Da, obviously. Why do you think we placed in a three men cell? With a sly smirk, Sasuke turned to face Naruto. Sasuke inquired, So you want to work as a team? With a more determined face, he said, Don't get me wrong. My dream is to become Hakage, if this team is the only way to achieve it. Sakura's eyes grew wide as Naruto said, no one can stop it. Sasuke continued to gaze onto Naruto as though he were gazing into his soul. Sakura twisted her head to face Sasuke quickly enough that her neck produced an odd crunching sound and she said fine. A smug smirk spread across his face as he said, just try not to slow me down Dobe. Sakura thought, how cool, her heart-shaped eyes shining. She turned to face Naruto once again and saw the expectant look in his eyes. Of course, I will work as a team too. I planned it from the beginning, said Sakura as she reflected. I plan to work with Sasuke, but there's no need for him to know that. All of Kanoha may be illuminated by Naruto's smile. After 30 minutes, Takura grinned and added, well, this will be our plan. If something goes wrong, we need to meet and rework this plan. Okay, Sasuke answered. Shyly grinning, Naruto looked up at Sakura. Can I talk to you? Alone. Sakura groaned, but nodded yes. Sakura paused, far enough away from Sasuke to cast a curious glance at Naruto. Naruto said, um, I'm not sure how to say this, so I'll just say it. Sakura, I like you, really like you. Sakura flinched and turned to look at Sasuke, who had heard his outburst. Toward the end, Naruto became more reserved and hesitantly admitted, I don't know why you hate me, but I can change, I, I love you. Sakura initially thought that feels different before answering the heartfelt declaration of love. She sighed as she looked into his hopeful eyes and said, Naruto, you're not a bad guy, and I don't hate you. You just annoyed me with constant date invitations. Sakura whispered the final line, but I love someone else. My feelings for him are too strong, even if he doesn't love me in return. Naruto's hair hit his eyes as he fell to the ground. Understood. Sakura's heart ached to see Naruto in such sadness. She gave Naruto one last look before heading back to the wooden posts and left him by himself. Pai a Naruto raised his head to the sky while sitting in a tree's shadow. He wiped his eyes hastily with his sleeve, hiding tears in them. Respecting others means respecting their choices. Sakura made her choice, and I don't want to scorn it, Naruto thought, grinning nervously. That hurts. After 30 more minutes, when Kakashi got to the meeting spot, he noticed Sakura and Sasuke seated beneath the wooden posts. He caught sight of Naruto's orange clothing a short distance from them. Good morning, children, Kakashi said idly. You're running late, Sakura answered. Yes, you see. When I was coming here, a black cat crossed my path, so I had to take a detour. Around all of Kanoha, Kakashi said. Naruto smiled and walked over to them. Sakura and Sasuke turned to face him, one with concern in her eyes and the other with a blank expression. Hey, Sensei, what are we doing? Sakura asked. Retrieving an alarm clock from his backpack, Kakashi set it atop a wooden pole. I set this alarm to go off at noon. Taking the bells out of his pocket, he went on, I have here two small bells. Your task is to steal them from me before the alarm rings. Anyone who fails won't get lunch and will be tied to one of these posts while I eat in front of you. All you need is just one bell a piece. But since there's not enough for one, one of you will definitely be tied to the post, and whoever that is, one of you on the way back to the academy, and disgrace. Gulp after swallowing, Naruto briefly glanced at his allies before returning his attention to Kakashi. 
Beneath his mask, Kakashi saw the determined expressions of his students and grinned, you can use Shuriken if you want. Attack as if you're going to kill or you'll have no chance. Well, if there are no questions, on my command, ready, steady, go. The three genin leaped into the jungle as soon as they heard the instruction. They came to a stop close to the clearing and exchanged glances. Naruto broke the uneasy pause with, I think we should stick to our plan. First to answer was Sasuke who said, he only has two bells Naruto. Do you understand? One of us has to go back to the academy. Naruto stated rather easily, we'll figure that out after we get them, meeting Sasuke's resolute gaze. The three genin exchanged nothing for another minute before Sakura made the courageous decision. I, I agree with Naruto. We need to take the bells from him. Together is more chances to do so. After that we'll figure out who is going back to the academy. Sasuke tightened his gaze on her. Finally, Sasuke said okay. But let me make it clear, I won't go back to the academy. Returning with Kakashi. Kakashi who was left alone in the clearing, thought it would be a perfect chance to read his favorite book. He was deep in the book and would sometimes laugh indecently. Up until nine shuriken, aimed at his right side, shot out of the forest. After doing a swift kawarami, Kakashi started after the assailant and discovered three Naruto running towards the river. Unaware that physical clones were being used, Kakashi chose to follow Naruto into a very clear trap. The three Narutos spun around and threw Shuriken toward Kakashi, missing the river. Dozens of Shuriken with different trajectories shot out of the surrounding trees at the same moment. Hiding in the bushes, the original Naruto thought to himself, Man, I'm glad the clones practiced Shuriken Jutsu yesterday. Having advanced knowledge of the trap simplifies the process of devising an escape strategy correct. Shuriken were flying at Kakashi, who vanished in a cloud of smoke. Naruto's gaze expanded. Cage Bunshin, a voice from behind him asked, you didn't think you are only one could get use of this technique, did you? He spun around quickly and saw the genuine Kakashi staring at him with a bored expression on his eye. After hurling two shuriken at Kakashi, which he managed to catch by inserting two fingers into their holes, Naruto started to flee. Kakashi sighed and followed him, but before he had gone ten paces, he sensed someone following him and heard multiple shuriken whistling. Turning around, Kakashi threw one shuriken, which bounced off one of the flying shuriken and hit another. I allowed shuriken of course, but this is starting to get annoying. He just moved out of the way of the third shuriken. When Kakashi noticed Sasuke ambushing him from a tree, one hand raised to strike, his eyebrows went up. Easily stopping the fist and grabbing it, Kakashi said, well, here goes the first lesson, Teijutsu. However, he was then elbowed in the jaw. He quickly spun Sasuke around, holding onto his arm and twisting it enough behind his back to hurt. In the following instant, Sasuke vanished in a puff of smoke, and Kakashi dodged another Sasuke's axe kick. Cage Bunchen? HM. 30 shuriken materialized all around him, flying directly toward him. 10 copies of Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura hurried out right behind them, grinning broadly. When Kakashi noticed that one of Sasuke's hands was in a tiger seal, his visible eye became larger. Katen, great fireball, as a massive fireball erupted from Sasuke's mouth and hurt multiple clones as it flew in Kakashi's direction. After saying, second lesson, ninjutsu, Kakashi hurriedly executed a number of hand seals and yelled, Sutan, water waves, a great deal of water gushed out of Kakashi's lips, striking Sasuke's move as well as every shuriken that was flying toward Kakashi, including those that were behind him. A thick cloud of steam formed as a result of the clash of techniques, obscuring Kakashi's vision. Staying there, Kakashi suddenly saw movement to his right and snatched the charging Naruto by the scurf to prevent his fist from coming close to his head. The clone immediately scattered. The clone's actions bewildered Kakashi until his visible eye expanded once more and he heard Shuriken flying in his direction. Futen, great breakthrough, Kakashi yelled as he quickly formed the seals needed for another move. 
He then released a powerful torrent of air in front of him, deflecting the shuriken and scattering the steam. After that, he made use of Kawarami. The shuriken had left multiple holes in the log that materialized in his place. Kakashi watched the clones look for him from behind the foliage of the trees. They have certainly passed the real test of this exam. I am impressed. Concurrently with Sakura, Sasuke, and Naruto. Sakura spoke, a trembling here goes the plan. I'm sorry. I couldn't help much. Just stay safe and look for opportunities to steal the bells, responded Sasuke. Yeah, leave the heavy lifting to us. You work with your head, remarked Naruto. All right, thanks, Sakura answered. Naruto's clones are very helpful. We need to make the most of them. Naruto grinned broadly and nodded. Sasuke, can you still perform the great fireball? I think two or three more times. Running around this forest seriously drains stamina. Naruto's expression turned sardonic. Really? Sasuke asked, casting a curious glance at him. Sakura said, obliging Naruto, then this is what we can do, but she was cut off by a well-known voice nearby. Kakashi remarked, coming out from behind a tree, oh do tell. At that moment, Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura all slipped into Tejutsu positions. They were about to strike when Kakashi signaled for them to stop by raising his palm. Enough. The alarm clock's faraway sound appeared just after that. With a cheery voice, Kakashi inquired, Time's up, the bells are still with me. Ready for the academy. Naruto said, I won't go back to the academy. As he and Sasuke prepared to attack Kakashi. In the same tone, Kakashi said, yes, you won't. It wouldn't be fair to send you back to the academy after passing the final exam with flying colors. Three astonished voices said, huh? The three genin's eyes widened at these remarks. The real purpose of this exam is to see if you have the most important characteristic any shinobi needs. Teamwork. Sasuke gave them a blank stare as Naruto and Sakura sighed with relief. From now on, you're a team. While individual skills are important for a ninja, what's even more crucial is teamwork. Making a play as an individual is bad for the team and exposes your allies to unnecessary damage. You might as well kill them yourself. The grins that were on their faces before. Follow me. Memorial Stone. Kakashi cut off Naruto just as he was going to remark, look at the marker. All the names carved in the stone are the heroes of our village. Ninjas. Naruto's eyes brightened. But the heroes listed here are not ordinary heroes. Really? What kind of hero are they? Smiled Naruto, her eyes bright. The dead kind. They died in the line of duty. Sakura paled and Naruto suddenly lost his smile. A frown came to Sasuke's face. In the ninja world, people who break the rules are trash. However, those who do not care for and support their fellows are even worse than trash. He turned to face the river and the mountains beyond, saying, This is a memorial. It includes the names of my best friends. One of them told me words that I will remember all my life. That's kind of cool, flushed Naruto, while Sakura grinned and Sasuke smirked. Kakashi gave them a thumbs up and vanished in a cloud of smoke. This exam is now concluded. You all pass, that's all for today, Team 7. Your duties will commence tomorrow. See you at this place at 7 in the morning. Cage Bunchen. The following day. As agreed upon, Kakashi reached training ground 3 at 9 o'clock. What's with the sour faces? He said, startled to see his classmates' emotions. You're late, yelled Sakura and Naruto, pointing their index fingers at Kakashi. Kakashi was looking dumbfounded. What? He asked, glancing at the watch. It's precisely nine o'clock now. Did I oversleep? Sakura yelled, you said to come at seven, and it's already eleven. Kakashi scratched his head and said, oh sorry, looks like my clock is two hours behind. Sakura complained, even so, you're still two hours late. Kakashi ignored Sakura's complaints and exclaimed, well, team, today we will carry out our first mission. Following Team 7's initial encounter with the Vital D rank missions in Kanaha, Naruto cried, that sucks, as he left the Hakage's house. Kakashi thought to himself, 
well, at least he didn't start it in the Hakage's office. These missions will help you work better as a team. They don't pose a danger to life, so you can gain experience as a team safely. But the ease of the missions doesn't exempt you from responsibility. Perform them with maximum efficiency. He stopped and glanced at the three genin. Well that's all for today. Next meeting in two days at training ground three at seven in the morning. Until then. He stopped as Naruto said Kakashi sensei. Sakura, Sasuke and Kakashi all gave him a look. Sasuke and Sakura turned to face Kakashi, saying Hakage Jiji told me you can teach us the next exercise in chakra control. Kakashi questioned him, hum? Do you think you're ready? Of course, I've been training with the leaf concentration exercise for so long that leaves stopped falling at all. I even learned to move leaves around my body and attract them from a short distance using only chakra. Sakura and Sasuke's eyes grew somewhat wide, while Kakashi arched an eyebrow and thought for a moment. Hmm. Well, I can teach you tree walking. We'll do that in our next meeting. I appreciate it, Kakashi-sensei. Kakashi grinned and vanished into a verdant shunshin. Takira went back to Naruto and inquired, You hated the leaf exercise in the academy, and now you're asking for extra training in chakra control. Are you sure you're Naruto and not a henge? Rude. Naruto pouted in response. With a swift goodbye to Naruto, Sakura hurried after Sasuke as he turned around and headed home. Naruto was about to head home for a meal before training when he leaned back and put his hands behind his head. But then something very soft touched his back and he paused, feeling two hands on his shoulders. A seductive voice murmured in his ear, Hey there, Naru Kochan. As she stood in front of him with her face inches from his, she ran her fingers down his cheek and said, I heard you want to learn tree climbing. I could teach you. For a small price. Stop it Anko, we're in the middle of the street. Anko retreated from Naruto while maintaining a tight grip on his neck, biting her tongue. In a matter of seconds, Naruto's face became extremely white and crimson. He noticed the lovely Jonin sensei he had met the day before as he glanced in the direction of the voice that had saved him. Naruto thought, I'm dead, and then he swiftly fell to his knees in front of Anko, apologizing. This won't happen again, I apologize for my clone's actions. He had a difficult training day, and he couldn't resist. There was a brief pause before he proceeded. Anko burst out laughing, and Kiranai gave Naruto a puzzled look. She murmured nearly inaudibly, Haha, calm down kid, I won't do anything to you, in public. Naruto rose from the ground and gave Anko a tentative glance. It was then that he realized something, can you teach me tree climbing? Wait, tree climbing? I can already climb trees. Naruto took offense at Anko's smile and said, Hmm? I envy Kiranai-chan a bit cause she has her genin, while I have none. I guess we can give it a try. But now, Kiranai and I are going for Dango. You can come in two hours to training ground 44. Naruto's features broke into an uneasy smile. Thanks, but his thoughts were racing, should I run? When Kakashi showed up behind Enko and Kiranai, while they were out purchasing a dango, Enko was asked, Are you seducing my student Enko? With a smile on her face. Enko grinned back at Kakashi. Jealous of your student? Kiranai questioned her Enko. Do you truly want to teach Naruto? Enko threw her hands behind her head, and when Kakashi saw Naruto striking the same stance, he started to perspire a little. I just want to have my bit of fun, what's wrong with that? Do note that usually those with whom you have fun end up in the hospital, answered Kakashi. Don't worry, I'll be gentle. Kakashi sighed and turned to face Kiranai. I'm going on a short-term mission today. Can you make sure that when I return Naruto still has all his limbs? Only for today. Tomorrow, I'm planning training for my team. Thanks. Anko playfully responded tomorrow, I'm also on a mission, so you don't have to worry, Mommy and Kakashi vanished in a Kanoha Shunjin. Ground Training 44. After two hours. Deadpan, Naruto looked at the massive dangerous sign and asked, Why am I not surprised? Behind him, Naruto heard the sound of a kunai whistling. He pivoted and hurled his kunai, deflecting the flying weapon's path. 
The next instant, he felt a kunai's icy pressure against his neck. Hey, you're talented. Perhaps we could test them out, Anko asked, swaying the kunai around his neck. Kiranai, who had materialized next to them a moment before, stated Anko, I promised he wouldn't be missing parts of his body after your teaching. Anko saw that Naruto was sweating profusely and asked, Missing parts? With a broad Cheshire smile, she concluded, Oh, are you scared? You seemed braver to me when we met last time. In the hot springs, Naruto said, This is a trap. I knew it. In his head before saying, I'm really sorry. After taking the kunai off his neck, Anko took a position in front of him. Oh, enough already. I promise to teach you, so that's exactly what I'll do. With a scratchy head, Naruto said to Anko, Oh, right about that. I know tree walking is supposed to be a chakra control exercise, but I can climb trees. We were taught that in the academy. Even without hands? Excuse me? Anko said as she walked up the closest tree, bypassing gravity entirely and planting her foot on it without pausing. Stars could be seen in Naruto's widening eyes. How? How do you do that? Anko leaped to the ground and started teaching Naruto the method. Naruto tipped his head, saying magic. A question mark popped up over his statement. Anko erupted into laughter at this. Naruto took an opportunity to stare at the clad Anko, without having to run while she calmed down. He remembered there was an orange miniskirt and metal mesh below the brown topcoat. As Anko giggled more, Naruto couldn't help but notice how beautiful she was and thought back to what had happened in the hot springs. Observing Naruto's blush, Kiranai grinned, then scowled as she thought about her pupil Hinata. Naruto, what did you want from us, Hinata and me, on graduation day? Naruto turned back to Kiranai and grinned broadly. That's exactly what I wanted to find out. Hinata, huh? I just realized that I don't know her name, though we're in the same class. It was at that point that Anko finally became calm and began to teach to Naruto the fundamentals of tree walking. He didn't even know her name? Hanada. Tree climbing or tree walking or chakra adhesion. By concentrating a fixed amount of chakra at the bottom of your feet, you can climb trees without using your hands. You can give it a try, Anko replied with a grin. He bolted to a tree after hearing Anko's explanation. But the moment he set foot on it, he was flung backwards several feet, creating a dent in the tree. Rising from the ground, he brushed off the mud and squinted at Anko, who burst into laughter once more, and Kiranai, whose shoulders jerked every few seconds but covered her lips to conceal her amusement. He reddened again a second later, saying she knew this would happen. It's a war. No, this is fair. It's payback for the perverted clone. Anko saw his flush and gave him a crazy smile. With a playful tone, she inquired, What happened, Naruto? Did you hit yourself too hard? Naruto quieted himself with an I'm fine and then stepped back up to the tree. His actions caused Anko and Kiranai to furrow their brows. Before his foot adhered to the tree, he shifted it up and down. Hmm, if that was too much? That's it he said, raising his other foot off the ground and putting it on the tree, then stepping onto the vertical surface for the first time. Naruto cried, this is so cool, while hardly letting go of his slightly shaky chakra control. A few minutes afterward, he laughed as he laughed and ran up and down the tree. Anko, who had been crouching with a black cloud over her head and a stick in her hand, drawing circles on the ground, lifted her head to gaze at Naruto with a serious expression. You don't have to be so upset because I did it on the second try, Enko-sensei, she exclaimed. Say that again. What? A puzzled Naruto exclaimed. What did you call me? A Enko-sensei? A nervous and less assured Naruto repeated. Enko smiled as she continued to look into Naruto's serious eyes for a few more seconds. Sweating, Kiranai said, I like how that sounds. Maybe I should become a teacher. While Naruto apologized to all of her future victims who were students, Anko jumped up and gave Naruto a I know, look, water walking. While attempting to sit on the tree with his back to the ground, Naruto questioned water walking. What's that? Anko arched an eyebrow, but she turned away and headed for the forest of death. Let's go. Huh? Where? 
Enko gestured to the forest of death's entrance with her index finger, saying there, Erm. Enko sensei, I don't know if you've noticed, but there's a sign entry forbidden over there. Enko hummed, but continued on her way. Hmm? Kiranai merely shook her head and followed Anko when Naruto turned to face her. Gulp Naruto trailed Anko nervously. After 30 minutes, the death forest. Following Anko and Kiranai, Naruto paced around taking in his surroundings. Is that a giant centipede? Anko asked, grinning broadly as he turned back to face Naruto. Scared? Naruto whispered, I feel like you're the scariest creature in this forest for some reason, but Anko caught his words and a spark appeared in her eyes. Anko placed her arm around Naruto's shoulders and pressed him against her body, asking, Oh, what was that? Are you scared of your Anko sensei? Naruto blushed and answered, Uh, no. Kiranai announced, We've arrived ahead of them. They'd come to a tiny river, Naruto realized. Anko let go of Naruto's shoulders and walked over to the river, standing motionless on its surface. She turned and grinned at Naruto, whose eyes were wide open. Naruto narrowed his eyes at the grinning Anko and said, The technique is similar to tree climbing. Focus your chakra and walk. Now give it a try. Kiranai's expression softened as Anko's smile expanded, asking, Is there a catch here too? Naruto sighed and took off his tops, prepared to be wet. Anko gave him a wolf whistle, and he reddened profusely. With nothing on but his panties, he walked over to the river. He managed to balance on the water for a few seconds before falling in. He heard Anko laughing when he surfaced again, and glancing toward her, he saw that she was still standing in the water. Naruto grinned as he dove beneath and proceeded to swim downstream in the direction of Anko. Kiranai noticed what he was doing and arched an eyebrow. Naruto took his hands out of the water and pulled Anko into it as he reached his target, who was sitting on the water, splashing it and laughing. Naruto burst out of the water and began laughing at Anko, who was still submerged in the water with her hair covering her face. He evaded shurikens flying in his direction after a split second. His face went pale as he looked in the direction they had come from and saw Anko pulling kunai from behind her back with a crazed smile. Not waiting for a second, Naruto grabbed his clothes and, using the newly learned technique, bounced off one tree and jumped onto a branch of another, evading the kunai. Kiranai, grinning at the situation, turned her head towards Naruto and said, Run. After five minutes, under a big tree by the river, Naruto laid in his panties, bound and naked. There was a tiny cut on his cheek. Anko stood above him, grinning like a predator. A kunai thrown by Kiranai rescued Naruto from the rope and stopped her experiments before she could say, Hmm, the taste of the original's blood really differs from the clone. I wonder what else distinguishes you. Hmm, Kiranai-chan, you're ruining the fun of his training. Anko's expression softened into a pout. Kiranai went to Naruto, who was already free of the ropes, and said, It's a shame to hear that, but Naruto needs to learn to walk on water. We can't waste time on your games, Anko. You can start again. Naruto eyed Anko warily before making his way toward the water. He stepped on its surface and stood on the water, sensing the flow of chakra. He took two steps and felt himself beginning to lose his balance. At that moment, he concentrated more chakra on his foot and leaped. Naruto opened his eyes to see that he was across the river from Kiranai and Anko, just in time to escape colliding with a tree. Huh? He asked, turning back to face the water and deciding to get serious about training. With his chakra focused and seals formed, he cried out, Teju Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. When Anko and Kiranai saw how many clones Naruto had made, their eyes were wide. The two Konoichis thought at the same time, what an incredible amount of chakra. As his clones started to attempt to stand on the water, they spotted a bewildered expression on Naruto's whiskered face. Anko jumped over the river and rested her elbow on Naruto's shoulder, asking, What happened, Naruto? This is strange. I'm doing the technique just like always, but the number of clones is greater than I wanted. I thought my control was supposed to improve. Naruto expressed concern to Anko. After giving it some thought, Anko said to Naruto, 
you are doing it the same way? Oh, you always knitted chakra for 10 clones, but could create only five due to poor chakra control. After improving your chakra control, you no longer waste as much chakra. What? It's normal, just repeat the technique a few times and feel the required chakra for the jutsu, Anko said, taking her elbow off of his shoulder and stroking his blonde hair with her palm on his head. Naruto grinned broadly and said, Oh, okay, thanks, Anko sensei Kiranai grinned as she watched the scene. She looked over at the clones rehearsing and was shocked to discover that several of them had already been standing on the water for longer than 30 seconds. I heard that he was at the bottom of his class. He learned Cage Bunshin during the Mizuki incident and reached this level less than a week after obtaining this technique, she said, turning to face Anko. Such an amount of chakra and excellent chakra control. Anko walked over to Kiranai and sat down, saying, he has a bright future ahead. Kiranai laughed teasingly in response, asking, Fufufu, feeling happy about your pupil, Anko sensei? Anko laughed so hard that Naruto felt shivers down his spine. Yeah, I envy Kakashi, he's lucky with this kid. Does he also have an Uchiha genius? Maybe he'll sell this one to me, Naruto said. Naruto turned to face the laughs and embarrassed when he saw Anko taking off her clothes. All of the clones eventually turned to face Anko, a hint of red on their faces. Observing their response, Anko proceeded to strip, hanging her damp garments in the sunlight. Anko whirled around when she heard a wolf whistle behind her and saw Naruto scattering the clones and dodging under the surface while complaining, stupid cage bunchin. Kiranai arrived at the river, where Naruto was still seated a minute later. Naruto flushed and dipped a little deeper beneath the water, asking, Are you okay? Yeah, I just wanted to cool off a bit because I got overheated in the sun, Naruto said, blushing even more as he heard Anko giggle. After an hour, Anko, completely clothed and dry, yelled, All right, disperse the clones. Naruto, perched on the water's surface, exclaimed, Okay. Near him, every clone was either sitting or standing on the water. A few continued to sway slightly, but nobody fell in. He scattered the clones by leaping onto the shore towards Anko. Well, give it another go. Hopefully your recollections of the clones will help. Kiranai gestured to the water. Without any delay, Naruto leaped in the direction of the river and landed nearly without making any noise. With stars in his eyes, Naruto exclaimed, This is so cool. Before, I always had to concentrate on chakra to stand, but now I stand and don't even notice it. As Anko thought, shit. The kid is good. With the broadest smile Anko had ever seen, Naruto turned to face her. Thank you, Anko-sensei. Anko grinned and added, no problem. Now you owe me Dango, right now. Naruto scratched his head Dango. I thought you went for it before coming here. Yeah, but that was three hours ago. I need my Dango now or... said Anko. Or? asked Naruto. Anko answered blood, causing Kiranai to sigh and shake her head. Anko had a savage grin. By now, all the blood had dried from Naruto's face. D-Dango is a nice option. Dango store. After 20 minutes. I'm stating it once more. Dango is better than ramen. Anko angrily bared her teeth and glared. You wish, said Naruto, unafraid of the Konoichi who was clearly hostile. Whatever Anko had planned to do to Naruto, it was stopped when Kiranai shoved a Dango stick into Anko's mouth. That's it, you blonde bastard, get ready to die. Gazing at Kiranai, Anko noticed that she was carrying multiple Dango sticks. Acting like a misplaced puppy, she pursued Kiranai all the way to the shop. Despite his shock at what he saw, Naruto groaned and followed them into the store. He was shocked to discover familiar individuals seated at a table covered in a variety of candies inside. Sakura Ino Hinata, the females turned to look at him as they heard the familiar voice. Sakura remarked, Naruto, I didn't know you liked sweets. Hinata reddened quickly, but Ino only raised an eyebrow and glanced at Naruto. Naruto rubbed the back of his head and said, Sweets? Oh no, I'm just treating Anko-sensei for teaching me tree climbing and water walking. When Sakura heard Anko's name, she arched an eyebrow 
and Eno started to cry a little. Hinata's redness intensified. Enko, with ten dango sticks in her hands, requested, Can you introduce us to your girlfriends? Kiranai stood next to her, also holding the same amount of dangos. I didn't know that Kiranai sensei also likes dango. Naruto introduced his classmates, saying, Oh, from right to left, these are Sakura, Ino, and Hinata. They are my former classmates. Sakura is my current teammate, and these are Anko sensei and Kiranai sensei, who is also Hinata's team leader. Kiranai smiled beautifully and said, Can we join you? Ino yelled, of course. Sakura gave a nod, and Hinata's blush deepened. Enko started eating dangos from her hands while seated at one table, and soon after, she also started eating the ones Kiranai was holding. Naruto thought, a bead of perspiration falling from his brow, ah, she was just holding them for her. After a few minutes of watching Enko eat dango, as though he was in a trance, Naruto jumped a little when he heard Sakura yell, Naruto. Naruto looked away from Anko and made Kiranai and her turn abruptly back to him. Sorry, did you say something? He said. It hasn't even been three full days since he became Kakashi's student and the resemblance. Sakura asked again, clearing her mouth. So, what did Anko sensei teach you? Sakura saw a dango stick fly directly in front of her eyes at that very instant. Her face became completely white as she looked at the spot where it had fallen. The stick was buried at least two inches into the wall. She looked back to the source of the stick and saw Anko's grave expression, which was made even more so by the dango behind her cheek. For you Anko-san, Pinky, Anko said with a sly smile, or Anko-sama, your choice. Sakura stumbled, pardon me Anko-san. With worried expressions, Sakura, Ino, and Hinata swiftly turned to face Naruto and asked, hey, why is this even a big deal? Anko tilted her head gently in his direction and drank Dango with her mouth. She answered, Don't think about it, shorty, which caused Sakura, Ino, and Hinata to turn to face Anko with wide eyes. Naruto drew circles on the table and covered it with a black fog. I'm not short, I'm still growing. Naruto fell off his chair and started to sob quietly on the floor as Anko responded, Keep telling yourself that, as if she could actually hear his thoughts. Kiranai pulled a mournful face as Hinata appeared to want to say something but was afraid to. Sakura inquired once again, Aham Naruto, I wanted to ask you, what did Anko-san teach you? With a dejected expression on his face, Naruto got up from the ground and said, tree climbing and water walking. Sakura arched an eyebrow. Anko, in the meantime, finished her dango and threw the stick in her mouth. She then leaned back and listened to the discussion while holding the dango stick between her teeth. Kakashi sensei said he would teach us tree climbing the day after tomorrow, right? Yes, Anko sensei heard what Kakashi sensei told us and offered to help me. While inadvertently mimicking Anko, Naruto ate his dango sticks and threw his hands behind his head. Observing the resemblance between Anko and Naruto, Ino posed the apparent query. Are you and Anko-san related? Anko laughed aloud at the question, and Naruto nearly toppled over in his chair. Naruto cried out, What? No, where did you get that idea? Ino grinned at him and raised her hands in the air. Calm down, I just noticed some similarities and thought. Anko answered, No, we're not related, although, I never knew my parents, glancing at Naruto, whose eyes grew as big as plates. With a swift denial, Naruto said, No, 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 this can't be. Why? Don't you love your one chan, Naru? Anko asked as Naruto slid off his chair once more and crawled backward, followed by a loud bang. Anko leaped from her chair and hurried over to Naruto, pretending to be worried as he bent his head and said, No, Otaudo, are you okay? Kiranai's shoulders quivered as the other girls at the table could not contain their laughing. Anko stopped and reached down to lift Naruto's face with her hand. She got up and went back to her seat, and Naruto did the same right away. Their expressions were expressionless. Kiranai gave Anko a sidelong glance, but she didn't respond. It took Sakura, Ino, and Hinata a few minutes to calm down. While Sakura persisted in her interrogation of Naruto, Hinata cast a troubled glance at him. 
After 15 minutes, thanks for the treat, Naruto, Kirinai said, turning to face her pupil who was gathering the courage to talk. Naruto-kun, I appreciate the treat, Hinata remarked, her face flushed. Kirinai and Hinata headed home as Naruto waved and smiled, haha, no problem, Hinata-chan. Because Naruto named Hinata-chan, Kirinai helped her up so she wouldn't fall. Enko and Naruto were the only ones left as Ino and Sakura had already left. Hae he sighed and turned to face her. I'm totally broke. You spent almost the entire evening with me and Kirinai, then had dinner with five girls and all you lost was your wallet. Oh, in my head, that sounded like a blessing. But, looking at Naruto's innocent expression, she sighed whatever. Well, I want to go home, take a relaxing bath, and get a good night's sleep before tomorrow's mission. Then, see you later, Anko-sensei, Naruto grinned broadly. Anko came up to him and gave him a firm hug after noticing his smile. Naruto lacked the courage or the language to address Anko. He lifted his hands awkwardly and gave her a hesitant hug in return. His face in her velvety chest and he was not even aware of it. Anko replied to him, call if you need help, especially if it concerns training, but her voice was devoid of her normal bloodlust. However, her bloody smile reappeared a moment later, or if you want to feel my boobs again. With his face as red as a tomato, Naruto, who had been enjoying the warmth of the hug up, until that point leaped away from Anko as soon as he recognized where his head was. Ha ha ha, bye midget! Anko exclaimed as he laughed and vanished into a leaf body flicker. In a stupor, Naruto returned home. After coming home, he showered, got dressed, and rested in bed. His room's ceiling caught his attention, and all he could think was so soft. I will continue the story in next part till then we weave offline.